Welcome to the live coverage of the InfoWars nightly news of Obama's 2015 State of the Union. Now, you just heard the pre-buttal from Anonymous, a little bit better than a rebuttal from Joni Ernst. But we're going to be talking about what Obama is talking about. And as we just heard, this is nothing but a fraud. Of course, the mainstream media is talking about Obama doing his Robin Hood turn. Actually, Obama is the King John, and he's going to be talking to the House of Lords. And these people have made themselves just as much of a ceremonial anachronism as the House of Lords truly is. So I've got with us in the studio here, we've got Leanne McAdoo and Jakari Jackson. Joe Biggs is going to be joining us as well to respond to what Obama is going to be talking about. And of course, from what we've learned in the preceding week, we know that he's going to be talking about a lot of different things, primarily about taxes, about free college education, which is not going to be free. He's also going to be talking about trade and a lot of news about the internet, trying to exert control, financial control over the internet. What are you guys looking for tonight? My favorite part of the State of the Union is the Skeksy Parade, when all the Skeksies come out <laughs> and they clap for each other and they just clap and revel in their evilness. That's it's just an extended clap fest. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing him talk oh, about. There's Lindsey Graham. Oh, your best buddy, <laughs> Lindsey Graham. Right next to John McCain, where they always, you can't separate those two guys. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, Jamal. no, just uh, <laughs> hear, hear him talk about the war on terrorism, uh, how he plans to combat that while continuing to, pay, uh, to fund our opposition overseas, and also hear about how he plans to help the economy. You know, we've seen a lot of things, banker bailouts. Now he's talking about the free college tuition, as we know, nothing is free. Somebody has to pay for it. So who is this going to be? I'm interested to see who that's going to end up being. Well, and of course, normally this would be even more irrelevant because Obama is operating against a Congress that is controlled by the other party. Except that Obama is increasingly talking about how he really doesn't care about Congress. And of course, mm -hmm. they're not going to take any power back. They're not going to try to use any checks or balances against Obama as they have a duty to under the Constitution. No, instead, they're simply going to be passing the checks around. Whether it's passing the checks out to the bureaucracy that does whatever it wishes and writes most of the laws, calling them regulations, or whether it's passing out the checks to his corporate sponsors, or as he's done in the past, passing out checks to his own members on the House floor as they're coming up for a vote on something that affects the people that are writing those checks that Boehner is passing out. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Can we get that clip? The you guys tobacco have that clip lobbyist. Ready? Yeah, the tobacco lobbyist. That's a great yeah. clip, a great find. Uh, what yeah, while we're waiting for them out. to uh, come in, and he's gonna be fashionably late. Uh, can we play that clip? Have you guys got that clip up? Okay, all right, we're gonna get to that clip in a minute. Now, we were talking about how there's been a lot of trumpeting about how there's going to be a massive uh, tax change. And this tax is what they're talking about with him playing Robin Hood. He's talking about doing $320 billion worth of taxes. And of course, it's kind of hard to get your head around numbers that are that large. So to give you an idea of what that amounts to, there's 84% of the countries in the world that have economies, the entire gross domestic product is that amount or less, $320 billion. That's how much social engineering Obama is proposing. And of course, this is more of a State of the Union in terms of revealing his plans, what really might happen than we've seen in the past. Because again, he's going to make it happen with his executive orders. He talked about after the election, he really didn't care that the Congress had a majority of Republicans because he was gonna push his climate agenda through. Mm -hmm. With his executive orders and with the permanent entrenched bureaucracy, like the EPA in this case, he doesn't have to go to elected representatives. And as far as he's concerned, it's absolutely irrelevant what you, the people, chose in the last election. And of course, we know the elections themselves are notoriously rigged. But even with that, he could care less. He's going to do whatever he wishes. And it's gonna be interesting to see how the president addresses Congress when this largely Republican majority was elected based on a referendum against his agenda. Oh, here he comes. Oh, here we go, the skeptic. All right. All right. Oh, I love how they set this up. It's like, you know, when you watch a boxing match and they come through the tunnel and all the fans are on both <laughs> sides and they're slapping hands with the fans. That's what this reminds me of. <laughs> Except, Jakari, there's no opposition. Yeah. yeah. There isn't a boxing match. Well, the, the American people, that's the opposition. <laughs> oh, man. Here yeah. comes the turtle. Yeah, Boehner's his sparring partner. They're really working for the same guys. <laughs> oh, goodness. They're like, here you go, guys. Make us proud.
We paid you a lot of money. <laughs> so it's quite the crowd. Uh, we'll see what he has to say. Uh, I just expect more lip service. More broken else. promises. One of the things he's been telling people is that he's going to give two years of free college. Except he's got a lot of details that have been leaked about how he's going to change student loans, how he's going to set up pay as you earn. And of course, one might ask the question, well, if it truly is free college, why do we need student loans? If you read the details, oh, he's talking about 75, up to 75% of your tuition at junior college. So everything about this is a lie from the get-go. And if they want to talk about Robin Hood, we need to understand that Robin Hood took money from the rich and gave it to the poor. The people that are taking the money, the King Johns, the... Uh, uh, the sheriff of Nottingham. These are the guys that Robin Hood. But this is fighting isn't even the right. the super rich that he's targeting. He's targeting the, I guess you would call them upper middle class. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's that's the middle class is going to be saddled with the sixty billion dollar free tuition bill. So and they have leaked a lot of details of this. Reason we know a lot of what's going on with the the details of the tax plan is because he's been leaking this for the last week. Uh, putting this out on social media, but again, couching it in terms that are favorable to him, couching mm -hmm. it in terms that are actually lies, saying that I'm going to give you free tuition when in actuality, at most, it's going to be 75%. They're going to set this up to uh, take this out as withholding from your paycheck if you get a job. And of course, you're going to be paying for this. We'll talk about this. We're going to analyze the implications of this. But of course, Obama wants to uh, open up our colleges to illegal immigrants. That's been one of the big thrusts, of course, with the dreamers. People who are 31 years uh, old or less can come here and get free education. They can get in-state tuition anywhere in the country, unlike uh, American citizens. And of course, if they're going to set up free college for two years, or even 75% of it for two years, guess who's going to be paying for that forever? American citizens will be paying for that. That's right. This is part of expanding Cloward and Piven, opening up the borders, bringing in people to consume education. And of course, the last time we heard that he was gonna make something affordable was with Obamacare. Mm -hmm. How right. did that turn out? The Affordable yeah, Care Act. We're all gonna find <laughs> out here soon when we pay our taxes. That's I think right. a lot of people are gonna be really surprised to see you know, how much they like those plans they didn't get to keep. And how he talked about the, uh, the taxes would not increase, you know, and across the board taxes increased. One of the things that's buried in this, the details, is that he is going to require employers with 10 or more employees, he's going to require them to set up individual retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. Now, the last time he did this, making health insurance affordable, that was initially called a mandate, and then very quickly they called it a tax to get it to pass the Supreme Court. Of course, it is a tax. Of course, it is income redistribution. He was playing Robin Hood with affordable health care, except that he was robbing the American people and giving it to the insurance companies and the banks. And that's what they've been doing all along. Yeah, and we talked about that earlier, how the the savings, pl retirement plans are the first things to go. The pensions are the first you know, place where they dip their hands in the pockets of pensions. So who's to Absolutely say what's right. going to happen with the compounding interest in an IRA that your employers are mandated to give you? Absolutely. And one of the first things he's going to do is take away education IRAs. That's part of this plan as well. So he talks about free education. That's free education if you're going to be dependent on Washington. If you wanted to set aside money in a 509 plan, he's going to take that away from you. Privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you my exact same speech from last year. <laughs> there you go. The speechwriters have such an easy job when it comes to the State of the Union. They just recycle it year after year. Pretty much, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, please. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice President, members of Congress, my fellow Americans. We are 15 years into this new century. Fifteen years that dawned with terror touching our shores, oh. that unfolded with a new generation fighting two long and costly wars, Ooh, terror. that saw a vicious sentence. recession spread across our nation and the world. It has been, and still is, a hard time for many. But tonight, 
we turn the page. <laughs> Tonight, after a breakthrough year for America, our economy is growing and creating jobs at the fastest pace since 1999. Many of those government yeah, right. jobs. And low income, that you got to get three of them to feed your family yeah. and get food stamps. Part time <laughs> jobs. People have to have more jobs because they're losing their full time jobs because the employers can't afford mm -hmm. to Big pay for the I Obamacare. Walmart mandate. and other right. employees as well. And now think with this new mandatory IRA, how many small businesses are going to be also be pushed out. Like oh, yeah. Can't, can't do that. The employment rate is now lower than it was before the financial crisis. More of our kids are graduating than ever before. Excuse That's a lie. Goals. Yeah, well, even if the kids are graduating, they don't have jobs to go to. Well, well when they talk about it, they're making the parents work 10 times longer, which means the kids are neglected and stuck in this school system that is completely horrible. That's right. When they talk about unemployment, Still they're very uh, there. careful about how they Chime define that. They don't the count. Peanut gallery. As we've yeah. been in almost 30 years. I mean, can the guys say two sentences before they start clapping again? They're like, you lies, lies. They eat it up every year. <laughs> For the first time since 9-11, our combat mission in Afghanistan is over. <laughs> oh, remember it happened last time they applied. Now we can sell the drugs freely. <laughs> yeah. Six years ago, nearly 180,000 American troops served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now we're sending them somewhere else. Today, fewer than 15,000 remain. And we salute the courage and sacrifice of every man and woman in this 9-11 generation who has served to keep us safe. Mm, you know, except for the American sniper. They didn't, they didn't like that too much. I mean, I have no issue with the troops. It's the missions that they send these guys on. <laughs> Calls it the 9-11 generation. What does it call it? The surveillance state generation. Yeah, and then we have uh, one of his, his invited guests was... Uh, the Marine that was stuck in Mexico for all that time. He's taking credit for that. He didn't do anything to get that guy. No, he didn't. He didn't. No, he did not. He's going to go ahead and scoop that up as a victory for his administration. America, for all that we have endured, for all the grit and hard work required to come back, for all the tasks that lie ahead, know this. The shadow of crisis has passed, and the state of the Union is strong. If you're going to talk about a shadow of crisis has yeah. passed. Talk about what? the shadow government that uh, <laughs> spies on us from the it dark. Sounds like the subtitle of a Black Ops video game, The Shadow of Crisis Has Passed. <laughs> At this moment, I think the we're growing eclipsed. economy, shrinking deficits, shrinking deficits, bustling industry, <laughs> he knows <bustling> <laughs> energy production. No one really. <laughs> we have risen from recession freer to our own saying. future than any other nation on earth. Booming energy production as the Saudis are shutting down domestic energy. Yeah, he's, he's talking about overseas. Oh, the, yeah. the, the Chinese that are setting up solar farms on our. Well, we accept an economy where only a few of us do spectacularly well. Or will we commit ourselves to an economy that generates rising incomes and chances for everyone who makes the effort? <laughs> Notice how he posed that. Will we do A or B? Probably A. <laughs> Will we approach the world fearful and reactive, dragged into costly conflicts that strain our military and set back our standing? We got dragged that into those conflicts. That he keeps pushing them into. <laughs> using all elements of our power to defeat new threats and protect our planet. Will we allow ourselves to be sorted into factions and turned against one another? <laughs> or will we recapture the sense of common purpose that has always propelled America forward? If you don't, he'll veto. In two weeks, I will send this Congress a budget filled with ideas that are practical, not oh, partisan. Here we go. And in the months ahead, I'll crisscross the country making a case for those ideas. Really? So tonight, I want to focus less on a checklist of proposals and focus more on the values at stake in the choices before us. It begins with our economy. So he's got a pen, a phone, and a car. Seven years ago, <laughs> Air Force One. <laughs> Rebecca and Ben Erler of Minneapolis were newlyweds. Here we go. Multimedia. <laughs> <laughs> she waited tables. He worked construction. Their first child, Jack, was on the way. Mm. 
They were young and in love in America. And it doesn't get much better than that. If only we had known, Rebecca wrote to me last spring, what was about to happen to the housing and construction market. As the crisis worsened, Ben's business dried up. So he took what jobs he could find, even if they kept him on the road for long stretches of time. Rebecca took out student loans and enrolled in community college and retrained for a new career. They sacrificed for each other. And slowly it paid off. They bought their first home. They had a second son, Henry. Rebecca got a better job and then a raise. Ben's back in construction and home for dinner every night. It is amazing, Rebecca wrote, what you can bounce back from when you have to. We are a strong, tight-knit family who has made it through some very, very hard times. We are a strong, tight-knit family who has made it through some very, very hard times. America, Rebecca and Ben's story is our story. They represent the millions who worked hard and scrimped and sacrificed and retooled. And survived in spite of the, the government that I and banks have done to them. Yeah. You are the people I was thinking of six years ago today <laughs> in the darkest months of the crisis. When I stood on the steps of this Capitol and promised we would rebuild our economy on a new foundation. And it has been your resilience, your effort, that has made it possible for our country to emerge stronger. Well, we didn't build that. Yeah. We believed we could Very reverse tone, the tide of outsourcing. And the American auto industry was on the short. brink of collapse until we sold it to Italy. Yeah. For pennies on the dollar. Created yeah. more than 11 million new jobs. Like I said before, a lot of these are government jobs. Yes. And the way they define unemployment, they exclude people who have been unemployed for a period of time. On stop oil looking. And mm -hmm. protect our planet. And today, America is number one in oil and gas. No thanks to you. America is number one in wind power. <laughs> Every three weeks, and you're we sitting there celebrating this as the Saudis have just collapsed in a domestic. Production, you're going to see that. Lower gas prices, you're going to see that graph go exactly the opposite direction. Typical family this year should save about $750 at the pump. Don't worry, they're going to add that back in taxes, and you'll hardly yeah. even notice yeah, it. I believe that. Be taxes and also, when you talk about the these solar farms, I think solar is a great technology, but you know, you have uh, the, the environmentalists are saying it's so great, but then birds fly over and they get burned up. Right. All those streamers, I believe. Our high school graduation rate has hit an all-time high. But More not our literacy rate. See, you can cherry before. pick <laughs> what you want for stats. Yeah, we'll, we'll get them through, but we don't prepare them for what's up ahead. Right. We believe that sensible regulations could prevent another crisis, shield families from ruin, and encourage fair competition. <laughs> Today, we have new tools to stop taxpayer-funded bailouts. But and we oh, didn't wait do a that. minute. <laughs> wait a minute. The tools. You just put the taxpayer on the hook for all the derivatives of the banks. You just gutted this. You just gutted the oil industry that was domestic. And so, I mean, it's, this is just yeah, amazing. Like 1.3 trillion were on the hook. This for. Uh, lackluster Affordable Care Act, where you go, yeah. to, you go to the kiosk or you go to the uh, the VA Watson thing that Biggs just did that report about, and then they <laughs> pretty much give you some. Uh, Silly diagnosis. At every step. We just had an article today on Infowars.com. H&R Block said, we don't understand Obamacare. It's hopelessly complex from a tax standpoint. People don't realize they're going to be paying 1% of their income if they didn't sign up for the inflated insurance that they mandated. Yeah, it's not $95 unless you make less than nine grand. So you can always pick it. You can say, well, relative to this, the deficit is down, ignoring the fact that it has skyrocketed in absolute terms and that they waited until the very last day of the fiscal year to show how much it had skyrocketed. Hey, he's blank. <laughs> so, so, so the verdict is clear. 
Middle class economics works. Expanding opportunity works. I had no idea. That's why we don't do it. As long as politics don't get in the way. <clears throat> oh, they say this every year. We can't year. slow down businesses or put our economy at risk with government shutdowns or fiscal showdowns. We can't put the security of families at risk by taking away their health insurance. I like when he's talking about these the uh, government shutdowns and these sequesters and all that stuff. But I remember he was threatening not to pay the military. Uh, it was last year, the year before, and then he didn't want to have the White House tours. They didn't have money for that. But of course, they had money to go on vacation. There's this article we had the earlier today. Illegal, uh, no one can understand the new Obamacare tax code. Yeah. HR Block. CEO didn't have money for schools, but yeah, we had thousands of dollars to pay for all of the flood of illegal immigrants that came to the country. Mm -hmm. Today, thanks to a growing economy, the recovery is touching more and more lives. Yes, it is. Is he going to talk about Ebola? Is he going to talk about the uh, <laughs> flood of you know, illegal the immigrants? Small business owners plan to raise their employees' pay than at any time since 2007. Probably not. So you're not going to get well, a wage increase if the employer has to pay Those extra. Health insurance costs, we need to set extra our higher retirement than just making sure plan costs. Screw things up. The government doesn't or you're going to have fewer people working. We're making. You know about the government. You are the government. Do more than just do right. no harm. Tonight, together, let's do more to restore the link between hard work and growing opportunity for every American. If you look at the details of the tax plan, he's doing exactly the opposite. What he's going to do is going to drastically affect small businesses, farmers. Because it's going to be a big boon to large corporations. And of course, one of the things he's pushing and will probably get through with the Republicans is the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Mm -hmm. They both want that desperately. Yeah, he's been and We're going to really talk about that after the speech. Yeah. And to give him the fast track authority. Friday night pizza, that's a big splurge. <laughs> Basic childcare for Jack and Henry costs more than their mortgage and almost as much as a year at the University of Minnesota. And nearly as much as their health care. <laughs> like millions of hardworking Americans. <laughs> health insurance. Rebecca isn't asking for a handout, but she is asking that we look for more ways to help families get ahead. And in fact, at every moment of economic change throughout our history, this country has taken bold action to adapt to new circumstances and to make sure everyone gets a fair shot. We set up worker protections, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, to protect ourselves from the harshest adversity. And we make it available to anyone on the we planet who wants to come schools here. Schools and colleges, right. <laughs> infrastructure, and the internet. <coughs> Tools that they he needed wants to, regulate. to go as far as their <laughs> efforts and their dreams will take them. That's what middle class economics is. The idea that this country does best when everyone gets their fair shot. Everyone does their fair share. Everyone plays by the same set of rules. Except his banker yeah. buddies. Yeah, yeah, except his millionaire politician buddies. What rules does he play by? He doesn't follow the Constitution. He doesn't follow the written laws. What does he play by? What rules? We want everyone to contribute to our success. <laughs> That's true. He didn't. He wants all of us to contribute to their success. Mm -hmm. That's what does middle class economics require in our time? First, middle class economics means helping working families feel more secure in a world of constant change. It means helping folks afford childcare, college. Give your kids to us. A home. We'll take care of them. Retirement. Why don't you lower our taxes? My budget will address each of these issues. He Lowering says he's going to do the that. taxes of working families and putting <laughs> thousands of dollars back <laughs> into their pockets each year. Except he's going to tax the education IRAs that people have been planning for their children's education for a long time, that's a betrayal. And they're going to come after your pension plans as well as Social Security. Right. And he doesn't point out how they've got tax loopholes that are giving all of these credits to illegal immigrants that aren't even here paying taxes. And yes. Childcare. Billions of dollars. In today's economy, when having both parents in the workforce is an economic necessity for many families. Why is that? We need yeah, a increased increase tax rate that way. Childcare more than ever. The reality is they need state care more than ever. <laughs> in the 1950s, a median family of four paid one to two percent in federal income taxes. Mm -hmm. 
Now they're paying about 25 to 30 percent, which is what the second wage earner, typically the mom, if she's working, makes. So they put the mother to work to pay the increased taxes. And then he says, don't worry, if you do everything we tell you, we'll give you some child care credits. Yeah, it's like that movie review you did, David, of It's a Wonderful Life. And I believe the guy got offered $30,000 and yeah. his boss like, you're going to be one of the richest guys in town. That's right. It's not like that anymore. That's right. <laughs> and that's where, Jakari, that's where he's going to get everybody on these increased uh, estate taxes. Mm -hmm. Because he's going to tax people on quote unquote capital gains, which is really the devaluation of the dollar. You mm -hmm. bought a house 40 years ago for $20,000, now it's worth $250,000. It's still a 40 year old house. Right. Yeah. But they're going to pretend that that devaluation of the currency is actually an appreciated asset. And that goes especially true for uh, farms and for uh, small businesses. Here's another example. Uh, today, we are the only advanced country on Earth that doesn't guarantee paid sick leave or paid maternity leave to our workers. 43 million workers have Every no Every one sick. of those countries he had up there has a gross domestic product smaller than his tax increase. That forces too many parents to make the gut-wrenching choice between a paycheck and a sick kid at home. So I'll be taking new action to help states adopt paid leave laws of their own. And since paid sick leave won where it was on the ballot last November, let's put it to a vote right here in Washington. Send me a bill that gives every worker in America the opportunity to earn seven days of paid sick leave. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Of course, sick Nothing. because they're going to be no, they know they're going to be sick so they're going to be forced to take the flu shots no wonder he's going to give them the time <laughs> off come on now <laughs> good point there, Make sure a woman take the flu shot get seven days off paid yeah true <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> And I pointed out in a report I did earlier this or last this year how the White House is really guilty of this, and especially a lot of uh, Democrats <laughs> paying their to make female sure workers less. The overtime mm -hmm. they've Very hypocritical. And, and everyone in this Congress who still refuses to raise the minimum wage, I say this. If you truly believe you could work full time and support a family on less than $15,000 a year, try it. <laughs> If not, vote to give millions of the hardest working people in America a Didn't we have that article yesterday, the inflation, and it says you don't have to worry about inflation unless you buy a house or you just generally right. live life. Mm -hmm. McDonald's is meant to be a, a starter point. A, a stepping to stone. Get your, yeah, a stepping yeah. stone to get your foot in the door, not a long-term career. Come on, people. Yeah, my first job, I made less than $6 an hour. It's not the job of government. Mm-hmm. To give working families a fair shot, we still need more employers to see beyond next quarter's earnings and recognize. I never told y'all my McDonald's story. I think you told us. When I went from 4.25 to 4.26 an hour. That penny. <laughs> That's how much that that penny raised. Yeah. yeah. Very proud of you all know. the hard. It's the thought that counts. Awesome. Penny earned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the thought that counts. They they really want you to know how much they appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, pretty well, much. that was probably a lot of money back then. <laughs> hey, how old well. do you think do it? If I told you what my first job paid, you'd know how old I was. Yeah. <laughs> Things like lower mortgage premiums and a higher minimum wage. These ideas will make a meaningful difference in the lives. But the thing of about if you raise this minimum wage, a lot of employers going to have to cut back the hours of their employees. And that's what all or of raise the price of their goods. And that's the problem with everything that is mandated from a central location. They don't allow people to have the flexibility to work out things, and sure and it's just uh, keep it, earning higher. It has unintended consequences across the board. We have to do more to help Americans upgrade their skills. And let's talk about that. I mean, America. community college. It's pretty much a joke unless you get a technical skill. Yeah. Because I mean, I my first two years I went community college and they got my credits got completely wiped out when I went to University of Texas. Mm -hmm. They're like, eh, this is the ultimate. Over. This is the ultimate lie, though, to say that we are going to uh, uh, give free college when they're only at max going to give seventy five percent, and then at well, the same time they free. do this with one hand they hand you this. With the other hand, they take away the money that middle class families, poor families have been setting aside to educate their children because they want to punish the people 
who save, who are self-reliant, who work hard, who plan ahead for the future. They want everyone to be dependent on the government, not on their families, not on themselves. Well, they That's want them the to be so far in debt that the parents have to work overtime each. That's right. Thus taking their focus away from their kids, not being able to educate, uh, educate the kids. And then those kids are forced to use this common core. And yeah. then we have a whole generation mm -hmm. See, of slow people coming in. This graphic here is a lie. Lower the cost of community college to zero. If you read it, he's proposing 75% they pay. So that's not zero. Well, you first notice, of all, notice they always say it's free, just like uh, yeah. at first Obamacare was free, then it became the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Now it's going to be free college tuition, and then when he gets called on in a year or so from now, it is going to be affordable college tuition. <laughs> and it's really a tax on David, your you don't understand IRAs. fuzzy math. I'm sorry. <laughs> Seventy-five percent is zero. It just depends on how you think about it. You Common just, cold. Just got to round it up, right? <laughs> it's just like NASA and NOAA said it was the hottest year on record, and then they were like, "Well, thirty-eight percent. We're thirty-eight percent sure of that." Well, yeah. Well, Science. cherry pick <laughs> points across the globe that were hotter. All right. Now, in his plan, right now he's saying 9 million students, $3,800 per year. And the plan, it says a max of $2,500 per year. Wow. It also says a max of 75%. So in some of their stuff, they have $3,800 per year. and others, they have uh, $2,500 per year. So did but you it's not going to lower it? the cost. It's not going to lower the cost to get everybody in community college. Just like it doesn't lower the, hasn't lowered the cost to have more people go to college. It's actually made colleges more expensive as they've got unlimited budgets. They charge people more for their tuition. They go up right. in the tuition. Well, and especially, you know, I think it's uh, on his part for what he's trying to do. It's a good investment because you get them to go to the community college. And then when they go to the university and they're paying those astronomical rates for the most simplistic classes, now you get them into debt. That's right. For joke degrees that they can't even get a job for. Asking more businesses to follow the lead of companies like CVS and UPS. <laughs> and offer more educational benefits and paid apprenticeships. Opportunities that give workers the chance to earn higher paying jobs, even if they don't have a higher education. And as a new generation of veterans <laughs> comes home, we owe them every opportunity to live the American dream they helped defend. Oh, oh yeah, except when they arrest rise. veterans for <laughs> um, owning guns, and you know they arrest Grisham for walking down the street with his kid with his rifle on his back. But they would have put a robot in charge to run the VA healthcare system. Yeah, come on, guys. They, they love the uh, they love come on, veterans. Man. I love they're patting they're patting themselves. And then on they the back they teach DHS that returning veterans are the threat. <laughs> you know, but they love you so much. Jill Biden. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Jill. Has helped nearly seven hundred thousand veterans and military spouses get a new job. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> what do you huh. think about that, Big? Tell us about how you've been treated as a veteran. How long have you had to wait at the VA? Wow. <laughs> Years? You know, I went into the doctor to have my foot looked at, and when I showed up, apparently the doctor says that I have a broken ankle. You know, so I had to jump up and down and show this guy that my <laughs> ankle clearly wasn't broken. I mean, these guys have no idea the VA healthcare system is failing, and they want to bring in robots now to take it over. I mean, this is out of control. You don't know how close you came to having your leg amputated, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah imagine waking up and not having a right leg. I'd have been horrible. <laughs> Wait a minute, was it right or left? <laughs> was it this guy or that guy? It's my right leg that is supposedly broken, but I'd probably wake up with my left one taken off. Since 2010, America has put more people back to work than Europe, Japan and all advanced economies combined. The bad news yeah, is some issues. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the bad news is the entire globe is <laughs> in economic decline. That's why you see the commodities crashing. Like our auto industry. That's why even cheaper our oil auto industry back. that we're moving overseas. Yeah. That didn't even exist 10 or 20 years ago. Jobs of companies like Google and eBay and Tesla. That pays zero taxes. So no one knows yeah, that pays zero industry taxes. Industry That's right, dude. The jobs of the future. But we do know we <laughs> want them here in America. We know that. Paying no we're taxes paying, here in America. Paying to ship <laughs> industries so overseas. We need them here so they can spy on us. It's a total sham. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Dog and pony show. Yeah. Right. Trans-Pacific Partnership. And these new cyber crimes and cyber controls, internet controls, this is what's really dangerous. And he's going to get that through because the Republicans want it even more badly than he does. 21st century businesses need 21st century infrastructure. 
Here Modern we go. ports and stronger bridges. Faster, faster broadband. trains. Yeah. And the fastest internet. Yeah, that you're going to regulate. Democrats and Republicans. Yeah. Yeah, we, we need faster be internet. internet because nobody's going to be able to use it because it's so taxed and regulated. <laughs> well, we need faster internet because they're using so much of our bandwidth to spy on us. Right. Yeah, you got chargers you put in the wall that spy on you. Yeah. You've got your cell phones. You've mm -hmm. got everything. Facebook, everything is spying on us right now. Yep. Well, you think about it, it's a significant amount of your bandwidth is being lost to the NSA. And so they want faster bandwidth universally so they can collect more data on us. Businesses, including small businesses, need to sell more American products overseas. Today, our businesses yeah, export White House, more than ever. Internet rules to be and implemented without Congress. Workers, Here we go, Trans-Pacific Partnership. But as we speak, China wants to write the rules for the world's fastest growing region. That would put our workers and our businesses at a disadvantage. Why would we let that happen? We're going to let the corporations write the we rules. We should write those rules. <laughs> yeah. And In by secret. we, he means none of you because you don't yeah. get to see it. <laughs> Only I don't think she realizes she's on camera. With strong new trade deals from Asia to Europe that aren't just free but are also fair. Why are okay. all these people clapping? They don't even these know These agreements in. are being done in secret with corporate lobbyists. Not even these elected puppets can see what the agreements are. It's going to bring parity with these corporations to uh, governments and it's going to go far beyond trade. They decide everything in the international tribunal so yeah. Your country's laws don't matter. Your courts and that's don't matter. Why we've gone after countries that break the rules at our expense. But 95% of the world's customers live outside <laughs> our borders. You know, you see it right there. We can't close yeah. ourselves off from those opportunities. Tell us what's in it. If it's so good, you shouldn't have to hide it until the last minute. Fast track means that nobody gets to see it. Nobody gets to change it. He wants to sign it before the Congress, and the Congress is this useless vestige that isn't going to do anything. Wait, isn't this the same man that said he was going to be transparent? Yeah, mm -hmm. transparently right. crooked. What happened to that? He wanted to no. set up all crooked. of these online things where we could see what the lobbyists are spending. And transparent behind a very dark wall. Yeah. I think he's been very transparent about his tyranny. Well, he shows you footage from his vacations. Maybe that's like, it's kind of like a reality show, kind of transparent. Come watch me play golf or he shows you you know, how hang bad out with, he is you know, the basketball. celebrities and all that. Has reversed a disease once thought unstoppable. So tonight <coughs> I'm launching a new precision medicine initiative to bring us closer to curing diseases like cancer. Big pharmaceutical companies, big agra, Hollywood entertainment industry is writing copyright rules and regulations that are going to be forced on the rest of the globe along with their cyber internet controls, with their cyber crimes legislation. This is something that everybody globally should be concerned about. But of course, in the other countries, their elected representatives are not allowed to see what the corporations are negotiating with their lobbyists in secret. The free and open internet. To every classroom and every- Your data is free and open. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To the NSA. Yeah. That's right. yeah, it's free and open to them so they can openly spy on you and take yeah. it and use it against openly you. Openly and freely. <laughs> I want Americans to win the race for the kinds of discoveries that unleash new jobs. Oh, that's why you're gonna Converting sunlight into liquid fuel. NASA. DARPA, there you go. There yeah, there you go. DARPA. yeah, he wants <laughs> Americans. Rise of the robots, it's A-OK, -okay, yeah. right there. Yeah. The AI. Well, he's got that $100 million <laughs> brain initiative. Don't forget about that. That's right. <laughs> what was the movie where they were, all the humans were programming the computers and that was their job. And the when they got sad, they hit pills. <laughs> <laughs> that we'll that's what we're needed for. To Mars. Clean the machine. Two months the divergent. To prepare us for those missions, Scott Kelly will begin a year-long stay in space. So Who, good me? luck, Captain. <laughs> Make sure to Instagram it. We're proud of you. Yay. Come he said Instagram. on, he has been so tough on NASA. Yeah. It I thought NASA's first they responsibility like was reaching out to the Muslim hey guys, community. I just looked. That's what he Bulgaria said before. and Romania have faster internet than the United States. Right. That's Bulgaria. Ours wow. is ridiculous. ridiculously slow. <laughs> when it comes to issues like infrastructure and basic research, I know there's bipartisan support in this chamber. <laughs> <laughs> Romania. Romania. Wow. That's because the guy with the computer well, we so <laughs> the right <laughs> Isn't that where uh, Goose, uh, Goosefer is? Yeah, it's where Goosefer was, yeah. That's how he's able to hack all those guys. That's like yeah. fascinating. <laughs> 
Oh, no, he said we don't mind paying our fair share of taxes that he continues to raise. Lobbyists have right. rigged the tax. He means they don't mind paying their fair Some share. corporations pay nothing, while others pay full. He's talking about lobbyists. Did, didn't this happen under your administration? Giveaways that the super rich don't need, <laughs> while denying a break to middle class families who do. Yeah, what was the statistic that just came out? This year that we have an opportunity to. During his pay. administration, the top 1%, now they own. Even more than 60%. Yeah. Yeah. That all happened during his administration. And he says the same thing every then single year. Then why are you year. moving industry overseas? <laughs> it's so frustrating if people say, do we even need a State of the Union? I mean, it's all lies. But honestly, you want to watch it to see what they're not going to do. <laughs> Here's how we're going to lie to you for the next couple of years. I think it is useful as just a catalog of all the stuff, the broken promises. Mm -hmm. So you can at least go back and say, when he said, well, I didn't say that uh, Syria violated the red line, or I didn't say that it was free or whatever, you can go back and show him. Yeah, you did. But, oh, well, you know, my teleprompter told me to say that. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting to see how they can't even keep their lies straight. They don't have a good enough memory to lie consistently about the free education, for example. Honestly, I, honestly David, I don't think they care. They no. don't expect you to pay attention. They think you're watching reality shows or sports or whatever else. And I mean, if that's your entertainment, that's fine. But there's plenty of real stuff going on, not so much here. But there are real things going on in the world. I wonder what, did we ever find out who the, uh, who's the, the last man standing? What is that called? Oh, the designated survivor. Yes. Yes, one of the cabinet Obama members. on trust fund loophole could increase tax advantage on trust or of trust. Yeah. Yeah, they're trying to pretend that this is something that's going to affect the trust funds of people like Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. It's not. When they go after the 509 education IRAs, they're going after people who on average have $20,000 that they've set aside for their children's education. And they're going to tax those poor people. They're going to do the ex post factos, okay? After these people have been lied to by these, these guys, have made their plans, have saved money after they paid taxes, now he's going to come back and renege on those promises and take that money away. See, when you can't plan for the future, you become totally dependent on the government, and that's really the plan, right. driving everybody into dependency. And it'll be the people who can't figure out the tax code, people like myself who you know go through H&R Block or something like that, where they openly say, we have no idea how we're going to help you with your taxes this year because we don't understand. Well, the IRS says that when you call them, they say they can't. You can't rely on their advice to uh, to solve anything. And one of the things I like about this article there is that sign there that says we understand the, we understand the tax code. Right? No tax return to We can understand it. everything, and yet the CEO says, no, we don't know what it is. Yeah. We haven't a clue. So. When we leverage our power with coalition building, when we don't let our fears. Like the ISIS coalition. The, yeah, the ISIS coalition. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what we're doing right now. And around the globe, it is making a difference. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Bunch of uh, burned Christian villages First, from those uh, we stand yeah. United ISIS and uh, Al Qaeda rebels. Who've been targeted by That's terrorists right. from a school in Pakistan. After, to exactly right, Jakari. After we went to those we countries, continue. we can point with Drone pride strike. to the fact mm -hmm. <laughs> that even though they allowed Christians in these predominantly Muslim, Muslim countries for centuries, after we went there, they've been totally espunged, and now you see the, the, these atrocities being conducted on Christians because of blowback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's by design. At the same time, we've learned some costly lessons over the last 13 years. <laughs> we don't know what we're Instead doing. Of Americans <laughs> patrolling the valleys of Afghanistan. So keep on funding them. We've trained yeah. their security forces, who've now taken the lead. And we've honored and our troops' the sacrifice by supporting that all of our weapons first with them. democratic transition. <laughs> Instead of sending large ground forces overseas, we're partnering with the nations rebels. from South Asia to North Africa. We accidentally dropped supplies off to ISIS and yeah, said we didn't know anything about it. Yeah, we dropped a box full of grenades <laughs> over there. Wow. In Syria. A pallet full of grenades. American leadership, including our military power. Is he going to put up that stat about how many innocent people they killed with their drone strikes? Mm. Oh, I don't think so. He is won't really that good. Really. We are leading yeah, I think you made that report, didn't you do, about all the drone strikes and the kids? Mm. That's a good report. We've got a lot of these drone pilots now that are, that are claiming PTSD, <laughs> so now they want to make these drones fully autonomous so they can take that human emotion away so they can kill more people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And robots don't get carpal tunnel syndrome. Yeah, exactly. So they don't have to worry about <laughs> passing out purple hearts to the drone. <laughs>
It will require focus. But we will succeed. Mm -hmm. And tonight I call on this Congress to show the world that we are united there in this go. mission by passing a resolution. Yeah, there you go. More people died with drones than on 9-11. We need yes. that authority. And they need to authorize a use of force against ISIS. They're Second. Droning. Degrade and destroy and ISIS. Of America. They always them and training them and giving them weapons and then they're... They always sell these things as surgical strikes and yet even by their own statistics there's far more uh, innocent civilians that are killed than targets of interest. And that's not even to say their targets of interest were valid targets in the first place. Oh yeah, that, I mean we're I can vouch for that, that 100%. Yeah, we're never allowed to so question many that. Times, mm -hmm. So many times they kill so many innocent people for no reason. And then mm -hmm. half the time the target that they're going for isn't even in the building. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Or and, then, and then of course Joe, was that a valid target in the first place? Who reviews that? Yeah, exactly. you know, we don't I mean, know. We don't, don't even know if the target was even valid to start with, besides yeah. all the innocent people that were Yeah, that famous video from WikiLeaks, I believe it was a helicopter shooting down the crowd, and it was a couple journalists with their cameras. And then the guy pulls up with his kids in the car, and they shoot at the guy with his kids. And they're like, well, you shouldn't have brought his kids to a war zone. He lives in a freaking war zone. It's not like, you know, he lives in Austin. He can just mm -hmm. drive down I 35 to Houston or something. Right. That's now, he's bragging people. about how they're pushing us to the brink of World War III, and of course, he's pushing us to that. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Talking about what he's doing in the Ukraine. Such a success. And of course, that is necessary, and that's the other part of this uh, manipulation of the price of oil. It's not just to get rid of domestic oil production, but it is also to prepare for war because they're concerned about the global economy not coming back. Yeah, now he's talking about Cuba. But he knows the Russians are trying to get friendly with them again, so he wants to swoop in there first. Well, what you're right. doing doesn't work for 50 years. It's time to try something new. Hey, we can apply that test to our own government. <laughs> yeah. About every one of the things that they're doing. Their government hasn't Let's changed at all. That. It's just the... <laughs> it removes a phony excuse for restrictions in Cuba. Stands up for democratic waterboarding values. people and not get any valuable intel for years hasn't stopped him from continuing to do that. Begin the work of ending you know, the could he make that same metric with the war on drugs? Hey, if it ain't working for 50 years, it's time we stop and do something else. Yeah, yeah. As His Holiness Pope Francis has said, he's always going to quote the Pope. Mm. Diplomacy is the work of small steps. And these small steps have added up to new hope for the future in Cuba. And after years in prison, we are overjoyed that Alan Gross is back. Again, where you're belongs. listening to our Prison Planet live coverage of the State of the Union. If you're not a Prison Planet subscriber, please consider supporting our operation. We have a special right now, $29.95. That's just $2.50 a month. You can share that now with 20 other friends. It works out just 12 cents a person per month. And it's a way that you can uh, support this operation here, and of course, we have the nightly news every Monday through Friday at 7 Central. And we put out two free streams today, one on uh, Infowars.com forward slash show, and then another one on our YouTube channel. And so if you're watching these on any of those, it's, gr it's a great way to help support what we're doing, get the equipment here, get reporters in the chair, send reporters out in the field. We do it with all your support, so we really do appreciate it at uh, PrisonPlanet.tv, and it's a great deal right now. This is the best deal we've ever had for Prison Planet. And I keep all options on the table to prevent a nuclear run. They had the. Uh, they do. They just had the all-seeing eye as part of their monitoring program. There it is, right there in the bottom right hand. Unprecedented transparency. <laughs> the all-seeing eye. Monitoring. <laughs> we will program. monitor the program. <laughs> we will hijack. I guess the system. that's the NSA is watching them, right? Is that the, Please uh, step into your health booth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service. Starts up its nuclear program. This again. is Watson. <laughs> And that's why I will veto any new sanctions bill that threatens to undo this progress. Oh, there he's talking about his veto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Wait a minute. Hard, Wasn't hard it just line. recently that we used Stutznet to hack these guys? And right. now we've got to, uh, got to protect them. I mean, just. I mean, he just completely flip flopped. Oceania was our enemy forever, and now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> East Eurasia. We're looking beyond the issues that have consumed us in the past. Yeah, he just flip sides. He is definitely the president of no change, that's for sure. No hacker. And we need the hope. To shut down our networks, steal our trade secrets, or invade the privacy of American families. Well, Especially it's not so kids. much these foreign people I'm worried about hacking me, it's the domestic ones. Yes. The NSA and all your merry men. <laughs> Aaron Schwartz pointed that out. 
that virtually all the hacks were funded and the exploits created by our government for their use. And of course, it was the CFAA, which he is the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, which he wants to expand. He wants to change things that were misdemeanors into major felonies and apply the RICO statute. So we're going to talk about the implications of that when we do some analysis. Oh, so he's going to, yeah, smartphones, vehicles. You were talking about that last night, I think, yeah, David. Vehicles, uh, electrical yep. grids. And even back when Clinton was in office, they were warning about putting all of our infrastructure on the Internet. Mm -hmm. They said, do not do that, and they did it anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the plan B for when we do have some sort of a solar storm or hackers this take down Oops. our infrastructure, our entire economy? Why don't you economy? ask Michael Hastings about being hacked? Yeah. Oh, well, you yeah, can't. Absolutely. Yeah. West Africa, our troops, our science. We were just watching Jurassic Park again the other night. And the point they get into the electric vehicles and start going, and they have steering wheels that they can't control. And oh, here comes Travis the said, this is not going to work out good. <laughs> we know how this, how this movie plays out. We've seen it in Jurassic Park. It's going to happen in real life. We are can't the number of new Ebola cases declining, or are they just hiding the actual cases that are out there? Exactly. Yeah. Reported Ebola cases are declining. ...global effort to prevent the spread of future pandemics. Invest in smart development and eradicate extreme poverty. And exactly what did they do to keep it from spreading? I thought they brought six people, <laughs> six people back here and yeah, what, what did not what follow quarantine say, procedures. U.S.-led efforts for what, what did that guy say, Biggs? We went to that press conference and he was, was like, like, I'm just going to stick my hand in this, yeah, bowl, in this of bowl, bowl of Ebola. And I'm just going to rub it all in this Ebola. Like, if I don't have a no cut chance. in my hand, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> zero. Yeah. And then the next There's day, like, chance. people started getting sick and falling out dead and all kinds of stuff is, is wild. It's not like when you sweat your pores open up in your hands and yeah. kind of take something in. That's it's not going to happen. That's crazy. Yeah. There's zero chance. I mean, how crazy was it that Ebola was everywhere and then literally stopped yeah, being it just fell off on map. overnight? And no thanks to them because they followed no procedure. Oh, no, here comes with this. All the protocols. Yep. Now, one year doesn't make a trend, but this does. Oh. Now, see, this is the thing. He said he's going to do this without the Congress because he's got the EPA to work with him. He's got his executive orders. He's got the EPA's bureaucratic regulations that they create, which supersede the laws of Congress because Congress isn't doing anything. So this is why some of his stuff this year is really more important than typically because he's not going to follow the usual checks and balances of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, Mark Moreno. Yeah. Of Climate Depot, we're talking about one one hundredth of a degree. It's not even, you can't even actually measure it. So and only 38% said that they thought it was heating. Yeah, so what even, my it's well, not even a consensus. Of, yeah, Drudge, a couple of days afterward, they came out and they said, we're really disappointed in how they reported this because it's only 38% accurate. So 60% of the time, it's right. All and the these time. wildfires the are burning U.S. Time. acres because they don't allow people to take care of their land. That's they right. They have all these federal areas set aside that they don't let people set up fire berms. There's all kind of things you could do to take care of your land to mitigate wildfires, but they right. don't let they anybody don't, onto the land. They don't let you take out standing uh, exactly. dead trees. They don't oh, let you yeah. take out falling dead trees. And that's why these areas you like Yellowstone burn so quickly, why Bastrop just outside of Austin burn so quickly. And then they come back after the fact and tell people in the communities, clear out the dead wood that's fallen in your on your own property, but they won't do it on the lands that they control. That American leadership drives international now, action. This is <laughs> this picture of this woman, this this young girl trying to breathe it was just today that we had another revelation of the EPA Putting diesel fumes, feeding diesel fumes directly to children, uh, what was it, 10 to 17 or yeah. something like that? In California, we've already reported on how they did that in North Carolina to adults they'd selected for people with respiratory and heart conditions. And the EPA gave them levels that were more than 70 times what the EPA said were fatal. They fed that to them. And then, then they were doing it on young. But don't put a fire in your fireplace to heat your home. That's right. right. That's damaging to the environment, but we're going to just go ahead and. Make people breathe diesel fumes. Yes. And yeah. call it a scientific experiment. That's the example of yeah. our values. As Americans, we respect human dignity even when we're threatened. Oh, boy. Which is why I have Unless you get hit with one of our drones. Sure okay, now hold on. He's talking about torture. <laughs> it was my understanding before he got elected, <laughs> he was going to shut down Guantanamo Bay <laughs> and all these other horrific practices. And now we even have Diane Feinstein, who I'm not a fan of at all. She's paying lip service to it. But even she's talking about these 
torture reports now. Mm -hmm. The Obama administration and the Justice Department did everything they could to keep everything that the CIA had done quiet. He is always looking for things to blame on the Bush administration, mm -hmm. but he will cover for everything that the Bush administration did in terms of CIA torture. They did not want any of that to come out, even though we got a highly redacted report. The only reason we got that was because the CIA got Dianne Feinstein and her staffers angry because she found out they were spying on her. Yeah, that, that's right. fine when they and spy on us, but I think it was like a CBS interview. She's like, a drone was looking at me. I'm like, oh, I'm sure it didn't want to. And it was a little slap on the <laughs> wrist, basically, of the torture report. There you go. Here's a, just a little taste yes. of what they were doing. Yeah. yeah. And then they wrote their own report and said, we exonerate ourselves. Right. They had a huge website rolled out the very next day. To spend $3 million per prisoner to keep open a prison that the world condemns and terrorists use to recruit. We're six years into your administration. Why don't you close it down? Responsibly to cut the population. He says it get every year. Down. He's got that pen, all he's got to do is sign the yeah, paper. Yeah, you got your yeah. pen and your closed. phone, right. and, you know, Air Force One. Do use something, phone, guy. You got the pen, pen and paper. Let's he's go. been trading it prisoners for. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it's, it's still Bush's right. fault. You know, apparently this late, you know, second term, it's still Bush's fault that Guantanamo Bay is up and running. We, we got to close it. I'm and just going to keep on releasing all these. I'm going to say that every year guys. that it needs to be closed and not close it. Six years in, still using that. If we want maximum cooperation from other countries, and industry in our fight against terrorist networks. So while some Except have moved on from the fight. debates over our surveillance programs, I have not. <laughs> As promised, our intelligence agencies have worked hard with the recommendations of privacy advocates to increase transparency. <laughs> and more yes, wow. they, they have the are. recommendations <laughs> of privacy advocates that they have completely ignored. <laughs> safe while strengthening privacy. How are you strengthening privacy? <laughs> Looking for themselves. We put whistleblowers in jail. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, sure so. we match they make privacy they government about what privacy. they're doing okay, yeah, a I'm lot more stronger. What they do is they just spy on us. Yeah. To meet new challenges. Not and convince us we don't I'm need from the government. Don't ask me any questions. Mm -hmm. This is the part where he's going to pretend that they're going to put restrictions on corporations sharing your data. When in reality, he's pushing for the Cyber Intelligence Sharing Protection Act again, CISPA for the third time. That's the reality. He's trying to give the same corporations legal immunity if they share your data and spy on the government for them and share their data with the government. Just over a decade ago. Right. He wants to encourage them to yeah. with the government. It wasn't a liberal America or a conservative America. And for those of you who watched the nightly news tonight, we played that 11 minute clip from some of Alex's movies in the early 2000s. Uh, Martial Law, Rise of the Police State, Police State 3, Total Enslavement, and then a little bit of Police State 2. He was talking about everything that's going on right now back then even before that that's right. just he just happened to put in a documentary by then yeah, yeah he was talking about, about the, the surveillance blimps and they just launched the first one that's going uh just this year they launched the first surveillance blimp that's going to be looking right into your home yeah that's but the, the general that that's overseeing the project says i promise you we're not going to be staring at you we're not going to be watching you as you drive up and down the road it's, it's for your protection. We're trying to monitor the East Coast so missiles don't come in. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah they, put that, they put that blimp in the sky. It was for uh, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles or something like that. It wasn't to surveil people. But Too even bad we didn't think of Wired, that. Here's in Wired Magazine that will spy on you through your dishwasher. Too bad we didn't think of that during the Cold War, right? Well, in the next we 10 years, almost watched. every American family is going to have up to 50 different items in their home. Yeah, cruise missiles. Yeah, we got a whole lot of those coming over here. Um, yeah, it's, it's a daily thing. Yeah. Proof that the vision itself this is North misguided. Korean news cruise missiles actually Nine. swim across the ocean before they get here. <laughs> For real? <laughs> yeah, they got to give them a running start. Time I'm up. sorry, all this comedy on network television we're watching right now is just bringing it out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Time to unleash Team America. I know how yeah, it's probably in with that. America. But I still think the cynics are wrong. So. I still believe that we are one people. <sighs> I still believe that together we can do great things. Even I believe that too. But we have this and if we big can't, government in I the way trying to this is the, every turn. To this is the apple pie first pie encore. Take our money. <laughs> yeah. Mom, apple pie, rah, team America. <laughs> yeah. Our newest officers at West Point, Annapolis, yeah. Colorado Springs, New London. Our newest fast More food workers. <laughs> in Newtown. 
in Boston. Newtown. Yeah, he had to throw that in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In West Virginia. I've watched Americans beat back adversity from the Gulf Coast to the Great Plains. From Midwest assembly lines. But also Mid-Atlantic beat back your false flags. I've seen something like gay marriage go from a wedge issue used to drive us apart <laughs> to a story didn't of freedom. He's, uh, oh, well, sorry, didn't he story of him, gay marriage at the beginning of his term or before he got elected? Americans call oh, he was hesitant to support it, I believe. Yeah, he was. I think that's a San Antonio. So now the Supreme Court is going to decide that for everybody. So I know the good. And of course, an optimistic and big hearted generosity of the American They're going to force that definition on 50%. Live the idea that we 60% are our of the people who oppose it. And our sisters keep it. And I know they expect those of us who serve here to set a better example. Yeah, I'm waiting to see that. So the question for those of us here tonight. <laughs> Just waiting. Is how we, all of us, can better reflect America's hopes. I've served in Congress with many of you. <laughs> I know many of you well. There are a lot of good people here on both sides of the aisle. And many of you have told me that this isn't what you signed up for. Because all American arguing past each other on cable shows. Workers right there. The constant fundraising. Always looking over your shoulder at how the base will react to every decision. Yeah, let's get rid of elections. Imagine yeah. if we broke out Let's of these tight the policies. His corporate sponsors. Imagine if we did something different. Imagine. What if you just let me make all the rules? Be the king. <laughs> Understand, a better politics isn't one where Democrats oh. abandon their agenda or, or Republicans mm-hmm. simply embrace mine. That's where I transcend you. A better politics is <laughs> oh, one where we appeal to each other's basic decency instead of our basest fears. Our Lord and Savior. A better <laughs> politics is one where we debate without demonizing each other. Where we talk issues and to values America and the beautiful and facts. Uh, and right. then yeah, he'll just veto you if he... Or trivial right, history. exactly. You don't allow him to be the dictator. People's daily lives. <laughs> A politics... Even though the $1.7 trillion spending bill was completely counter to America, America's interests, we made that very clear, by the way, people voted in the midterms. They signed it anyway. Mm-hmm. And spend more care. time lifting young people up with a sense of purpose and possibility. Asking them to join in the great mission of building America. That's why they're building up. If we're going to have arguments, let's have arguments. War. But let's make them debates worthy of this body and worthy of this country. Okay, why don't you do the stuff that you've said you're going to do? Why don't you close down Guantanamo? Why don't you stop starting wars? How about you stop sending troops overseas? How about you stop funding all this stuff? Come on, guy. Close corporate. Why don't you give us some government transparency? Ever since you've been in August, the opium production in Afghanistan has gone up tenfold. Yeah. Didn't you see that? That was on one of his charts, Joe. (laughs) Yeah, I think they left that one out. (laughs) This is what I'm the proudest of. It's gone up faster than (laughs) automaking. Much faster. (laughs) All see something of ourselves in the striving young student. Oh, here we go. And yeah, the debt no that they have. I, I share that. Mom is snatched from her child, and then it's possible. Hey, to you snatch moms from their child if they use cannabis oil to help laws, fight cancers or things like that that their children are having. Yeah. Yeah. Or if they have raw milk and they transport it across mm-hmm. state lines. Or if they decide they don't want to go through chemotherapy because they think it's not safe or effective. Mm-hmm. Right. Or if they disagree with one of their doctors. And follow yeah, the so. advice of this doctor. Or yeah. if they decide Two not to doctors. take the flu shot, then their child's not able to go to school, and they're not able to do their job as well. Don't worry, we'll soon have a computer telling us when to go to the doctor and when to step in the medical <laughs> well, no, chair. Well, I've already have had an pills, experience with Watson. Those pills and that are right just, here, they'll just release the toxin into you. It's a sensational experience. We may have different You don't look bad, though, after Ferguson getting out of there. And New York. <laughs> a little bit redder. It was hot in there. <laughs> but and I'm missing a right leg. You can understand a father who <laughs> fears his son can't walk home without being harassed. And surely we can understand the wife who won't rest until the police officer she married walks through the front door at the end of his shift. And surely we can agree that it's a good thing that for the first time in 40 years, the crime rate and the incarceration rate have come down together. And use that as a starting point for Democrats and Republicans 
Community leaders and law enforcement to take more to guns. Is he talking guns. about just in the last month that the NYPD has stopped writing tickets? Stopped yeah, writing tickets. crime rate went down when I'm they stopped down. writing 95% of their tickets. All right. But I wonder if the incarceration rate has gone down just because we've had three states legalize marijuana because 80% yeah, of the people in prison are there the for marijuana. Yeah. Rate. Yeah. In in Colorado, it has yeah. gone down yeah. a, a little bit, but and of course he's opposed that. Of course, yeah. A state full of high people are a little too tired to be going out robbing banks and holding up <laughs> stores, you know? Yeah. That's what they deserve. <laughs> I have no more campaigns to run. Thank God. Thank God. My <laughs> only agenda. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. That one. yeah. I'm pushing my agenda. <laughs> I think he lost this last one. He want to acknowledge it. Can you guys, aren't you guys so pumped for when he becomes an ESPN sportscaster? Oh God, no, please don't say that. Actually, I wouldn't mind that. He can make the transition right now. No, no. I wouldn't mind it too much. Yeah, I wouldn't have He's to say him anymore. He's always on the golf course. What I believe is best for America. He we should be leading. There. If you share the broad vision I outlined tonight, I ask you to join me in the work at hand. You can go work with Bob Costas. I ask you to join me, if not. If you disagree with parts of it, <laughs> Vito. I hope you'll at least work with me where you do agree. And I commit to every Republican here tonight that I will not only seek out your ideas, I will seek to work with you to make this country stronger. Yeah, he says Republicans, but not third parties. You know, like they won't let Gary Johnson into the debates and oh, no. all the other no. things. Well, he does all this also to set up like he's the good guy, he's the nice guy, but the majority Republican Congress just won't work with them, and they're the party of the rich. They're Let me tell you, the all Republicans, my great ideas. The Republicans are going to work with him on some really hideous surveillance state legislation and on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and we're going to talk about this when this is over. And passing exactly. that spending bill. Yeah. They rushed to sign it. I want our actions to tell every child in every neighborhood, your life matters. And we are committed to improving your life chances, as committed as we are to, to working on behalf of our own kids. And we could triple that number if we just get more people across the border. That we are mm -hmm. people who see our differences as a great gift. We'll spend all that money we we're going to use to build a border, and then we're going to uh, build more border patrol stations hundreds of miles inland away from the border, <laughs> and then we're gonna hassle American citizens. That's right, to search your yeah. car. Yeah. And the are you an American free citizen, Because those are constitution-free zones. I'm like, sir, I'm in America. I don't want to answer your question. So then they smash your car window in. That's all right, come on. That we are still more than a collection of red states and blue states. That we are the United States of America. The corporation of the United States. <laughs> Washington, Inc. INC, not DC. Yeah, we're gonna, once we get past all of these apple pie generalities and the ovations, we're gonna talk about the devil and the details behind what he's talked about. And there's some really atrocious stuff and his plans that he's that been he leaking for the last Future week. generations of the Chinese. It's amazing what you can bounce back from when you have to. Is that that they have locked up and they haven't we turned over to the states as they became states? <laughs> 300 million acres. We're going to take your land and blame it on turtles. All right. Mm -hmm. Has been preserved right. for future generations. We too are a, a strong tight knit family. We too have made it through some hard times. 15 years into this new century, we have picked ourselves up, dusted ourselves off, and begun again. The work of remaking America. You've got 165,000 fewer foundation. troops who are in harm's way, but you have 165,000 fewer troops who aren't getting any health care from the VA, and they're killing themselves in record numbers because they have no one with any kind of idea of what they've been through in the VA health care system to actually help them get through that situation. Come on. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, looks like he's done. Yeah, he's done. Thank God. <laughs> Is this the point where Boehner passes out the checks now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have to wait for the cameras to turn off before that. <laughs> no, this is where they flip their chairs upside down, and there's a little number under there, and they try to get door prizes. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming. Uh, oh, yeah, so who was our 
designated. <laughs> Our designated. Yeah, let's play that Biden. banner clip. I think it's a perfect way to cap this off. Biden asked me to, to give out a half a dozen checks quickly before we got to the end of the month, and I complied. Yes, sir. And I did it on the House floor, which I regret should not have done. It's not a violation of the House rules. Uh, but it's a practice that's gone on here for a long time that we're trying to stop, and, and I know that <laughs> I'll never do it stop. again. Well, well, the checks from well, the tobacco trying to stop. Uh, I think, if my memory serves me correctly, <laughs> I think it was a tobacco check, yes. Oh, no, I'll that never that do it again. Looking back on it. It's a bad practice. We gotta stop this. <laughs> I'm trying to stop. It, it's like I'm trying to stop like myself, smoking. but I can't. It's like harder smoking. Than... I'm trying yeah. to stop. It's a bad practice, and you gotta yeah. stop it. It's I harder mean... than quitting smoking, that's yeah. right. Passing out clearly... those corporate checks. That was that clearly was trained to speak. Just I get mean. such a rush with that. All right, let's talk about some of the things here. Let's talk about his tax program here. Again, we said it was going to be $320 billion of tax increases. That's greater than the gross domestic product of, and here's some of the, the countries that have a gross domestic product that is less than $320 billion. Denmark, Israel, Finland, Hong Kong, Greece, Ireland, Portugal, New Zealand. This is the amount of money the entire economy of these countries is going to be using that amount of money or more to play with his social engineering is what he's proposing, of course. And they're going to be looking to mandate things. One of the things he didn't talk about is how he's going to mandate individual retirement accounts for all employers who have 10 or more people in their company. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's going to not help employment. It's not going to help people get raises if they mm -hmm. want to look at... Uh, increasing wages. That's hey, not, David, uh, yes. before we get too far into this, mm -hmm. let's go to uh, Joe Biggs's report from earlier today. We premiered it today on the Alex Jones show, uh, All right. talking See about that. the Watson system being used to administer VA health benefits. Yay, computers are going to start <laughs> killing our soldiers. That's right. Uh, instead of, I guess, foreign wars. Um, well, I guess they'll finish the job. So we're going to play that and we're going to turn you guys around and we'll flip the cameras around and go back to our normal look. And that'll just take a few minutes. So we're going to keep going. Um, people out there watching us uh, for on the free stream, Infowars.com uh, forward slash show and our YouTube channel, the Alex Jones channel. And also those of you who are our prisonplanet.tv members, we surely do appreciate all your support, and uh, so we're going to play this, play yeah. a couple ads, flip the cameras around. And David, Rob, take us there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Rob, uh, I want to tell the audience, stick with us, because especially on these internet proposals, there's a lot of details that the White House has put out in this last week that he just glossed over. He's just talking about mom and apple pie and waving the flag, but there's a lot of very bad details that have come out. And that's something we should be very concerned about because the Republicans are standing firmly behind him along with a lot of Democrats. The only opposition he's getting, strangely, on things like Trans-Pacific Partnership and Internet Control is coming from his own party. But of course, now they are in the minority. Obama and the GOP both want these things very badly. So we're going to tell you what he wants to do. And that's very important. So stay with us after this report. Welcome back to our live coverage of Obama's State of the Union 2015. I'm David Knight, joined with Leanne McAdoo and Jakari Jackson. We've just seen Obama come out and give his uh, statements, his very broad general statements. He didn't talk about any of the details. They've been releasing details for the last week, primarily through social media. And so it's kind of interesting to go back and look at what they're actually proposing. And of course, what he's proposing about education, may or may not happen because there's going to be a lot of opposition from Republicans as well as on taxes. But in two other areas, in terms of his internet regulation and in terms of his Trans-Pacific Partnership, Trans-Atlantic Partnership, those are issues that he has a lot of support from the majority Republicans. It's very likely that those are going to happen. So we're going to take a look at some of the things he's made broad sweeping proposals for changes to the internet, changes to privacy, changes to criminal actions, criminalizing and felonizing a lot of things that were misdemeanors before. So we're going to talk about what he's proposing to do because that's very likely to get passed by the Republicans. I think the first thing we should do before we go to the internet is to talk about this education proposal that he's talking about. And of course, on the White House website, he's got a couple of articles. One of them is the president proposes to make community college free for responsible students for two years. How does he define a responsible student? Well, that's somebody that's going to make 2.5 GPA or better. But the free part, there's a lot of questions about that. He put a graphic up tonight that showed that 
they were going to pay up to thir that 9 million students would get $3,800 per year that they would save. And of course, you do the math, that comes out to $34 billion. Yet on his site, we see conflicting information saying that they will pay up to $2,500 per year. So they're saying if the average cost is $3,800, they're going to pay $2,500. They also say they're going to pay up to 75%. Not 100%, but up to 75%. And quite frankly, the $2,500 Hundred dollars is not seventy-five percent of thirty-eight hundred. So there's inconsistencies throughout even that broad stroke. He wants to put it out there as something that is free for people, and yet if you look at the details, the details don't add up to what he's saying at all. That's exactly right. I mean, when you think about the student loan system, you have all these people who that may or may not get these thirty-eight hundred dollars or whatever it is to get this. It's pretty much associate's degree. You go to community college, but that associate's degree is worthless. Get an associate's degree in today's market and try to go out and find a job. Nobody's going to hire you. Okay. Even if you get that bachelor's degree, then it's like, did you take an internship? Did you jump through all these other flaming hoops of razor wires? So we might give you some job, temp job answering the phone or mm -hmm. getting coffee. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of these degrees go to nowadays. And it doesn't really leave you with anything worthwhile. Uh, this the vast majority of four year system. degrees right. don't really help you economically. And I guess one of the things that really kind of grates on me is the idea that staying in school longer is something that we as a society should reward. And yet there's nothing there to give people credit or to help them along as young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. He's not <laughs> certainly not gonna propose anything there because it's about keeping you dependent on the government. And as he's saying that he's going to hand out these uh, free two years at college, at the same time, the other hand is stealing the education IRAs that they told families and parents many years ago that they could set aside after tax money into these education IRAs. If they made anything from the investment or from its compounding, mostly they would be invested in mutual funds. If they made any money off their mutual fund investments, they could withdraw that and that would not be taxed. They could apply that directly to their children's education. So these people script and save with their after tax dollars, put it in something that they hope isn't going to be taxed. And now he's proposing to take that from them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Along with that, that's the 509. There's also another one, it's a, I've got the details here, but there's another one that they're gonna completely eliminate altogether that you could set aside $2,000 a year. They're gonna completely eliminate that one. And the 509, they're going to tax it. So you see the government telling you that it's gonna be free on the one hand, and yet they are taking it away and uh, taking away the tax deductions from people who are trying to do the right thing, who are saving, who are working hard, who are trying to be self-reliant. They're gonna punish those people. Only the people who come to government for handouts are going to be rewarded. Gonna get a little, just enough of a handout to keep you still coming to the state for, for that. And I think it's, it's very important that we understand how all this plays into the open borders and immigration as well. Mm -hmm. Because that has all been about, remember the focus has been on young people coming across, of course. Right. Uh, even the right wing guys like Glenn Peck and George Will were telling us it's eight year olds with teddy bears. And it's like, no, the dreamers go all the way up to 31 years old. That's right. the big misconception people don't have because you hear X number of children come over the border every month. 31 year old men, people older than me, qualify as a child under the DREAM Act. Yeah, dreamers. And that's the key thing for the dreamers is giving them educational opportunities, quote unquote. So that means that it's not, we're not talking about 9 million people. We don't know how many we're talking about. We're creating an entitlement program here. We're opening up the borders to allow everyone from all over the world, not just Central and South America, anyone from anywhere in the world can come into our country, can claim these entitlement benefits, and then we're all gonna be on the hook to pay for it. Right, because right. like he says, all this stuff is free. Somebody has to pay for this stuff at the end of the day. And when you wanna talk about people getting in-state tuition, you know, I'm from Oklahoma, I came here to Texas, nobody offered me in-state tuition. That's because you're, you're not an illegal alien. If you're an illegal <laughs> alien, you can get in-state tuition in any of the 50 states. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, you're gonna get a free ride. Now you're talking about uh, making it universal. And he says he wants to make it as universal as high school. He wants two years of college to be free, quote unquote. Mm -hmm and as universal as high school. One of the problems I have with this is that we've already got people in school for too long. Right. Right. They become dependent on government, they don't think for themselves, they don't get out and start engaging in the real world, learning real skills, learning real interaction. And of course they want people to stay inside that government run cocoon. And so he wants program, to extend right. this for another 
two years. That's what that's really about. But let's also understand that you're going to be paying taxes for this. If anybody has pays property taxes, they're going to realize that pretty much all of their property taxes go to pay for that universal high school education mm -hmm. that's out there. So there isn't anything that's free. And this is just right. going to extend the burden of that Plus, bring in the dreamers from other countries to uh, to use these benefits. And it also feeds into this college bubble. You know, as we've been hinting yes. on, a lot of times you'll get out of college, and even if you do find a job in your field, it may take several years to actually get there because they want the internships, all these other things. You know, like many years ago, you may have been able to get a decent job with an associate's degree. You cannot do that anymore. Yes. So it, it continues to feed into that. Let's talk about internet. Because we said this is going to be really big. And this is something that we believe that they're going to get passed because the Republicans want this very badly. And of course, we now have a Republican in the Senate who's now head of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Richard Burr has replaced Dianne Feinstein. He has said that he doesn't think anything that the NSA does should ever be made public in a hearing. They should never have any oversight of the CIA or the NSA. So these are people who are above and beyond even the worst stuff that we have seen coming along the pike. Now, here's the areas that he's talking about. He's talking about FCC control of the internet. He's talking about faster broadband. He's talking about privacy, hmm. putting, <laughs> putting restrictions on corporations sharing your data when they're turning it over to the government. And at the same time, they're putting out CISPA legislation again to try to grant legal immunity to the corporations who basically uh, turn your information over to the government. And it's David, not just I noticed you put LOL next to privacy yeah. in your notes. <laughs> yeah, oh. exactly. Do you think that's yeah. funny? Yeah, I think that is <laughs> amazing, a bit of irony there. And then, of course, he's, <laughs> he's extended the CFAA, which is going to give us a whole lot of new felonies. And so uh, the internet community is very concerned about this part of the proposal. This is where there's a lot of devils in the detail. Let's talk about first FCC control. Last week, he said that Congress doesn't really need to get involved in this. This is something that he says the FCC already has authority in. Mm -hmm. And clearly they don't. The FCC has never been involved with the internet. And there's no reason for the FCC to get involved in the internet. The FCC was set up to allocate broadband for broadcast, not broadband. They were set up to allocate broadcast uh, frequency so that people didn't uh, run over each other. They don't need to do that with the internet. We don't need any internet control. And so what they're saying is we're going to, and this is where the lies come in. They're saying we're going to set up the FCC to make sure that the internet is free. Mm -hmm. Well, the internet has been free. It's right. already free. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, free they and open. Freer for them. Exactly. And one of the ironies that he says here, he says there should be no geek gatekeepers as, and then he talks about, and as the FCC considers new rules, okay, the FCC is going to become the gatekeepers. They're going to make the rules. They're going to control this. And the FCC has already been on both sides of the net neutrality issue. Debate. They have they have switched on both sides. They will do whatever they need to. Right now, uh, the general public wants to have net neutrality. They want to keep things the way that they are. So that's what they're selling the public. Once they get that authority, they can flip just like that. As we've right. already seen them the do. Keeper. And then cities that have successfully set up their own high speed internet, their, their own broadband system, they are now facing um, against these giants Google, Time Warner, Comcast, all these mergers, ATT. They are trying to stop these cities from being able to set up their own um, municipal networks. And absolutely. I mean, that's what it is it's, it's taking the power away from the states. Absolutely. So they're going to centralize control. They're going to use the FCC. They're going to use the FCC as part of a multi-prong attack. They're going to come after us with security regulations to protect us from hackers. Mm -hmm. They're going to come after us with the FCC. They're going to come after us with taxes. They're going to come after us with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And why you say would we have uh, internet control as part of a trade agreement? Well, there's a lot of stuff and these so-called trade agreements that have nothing to do with trade, free or otherwise, but they're gonna impose us. Real quickly, let's go to a faster broadband. And again, I think it's ironic that they wanna talk about faster broadband when 
One of the reasons we're getting things so slow is because we have the uh, NSA <laughs> the basically tapping in. You try to send a text and it's got to go to the right. NSA first and then to your friend. Right, for well, everybody who doesn't know about the NSA, I've been to a facility in San Antonio. Uh, I believe uh, Gucciardi and some other guys went to a different facility. I mean, they're all around mm -hmm. the United States and there are these huge buildings where they pretty much sift through your data, your cell phone calls, your internet searches, you know, all your things. They look at your pictures on Facebook and all this stuff, looking for terrorists. And for everybody who says this is some old wise tale or whatever, you can watch, uh, one of the shows I like to watch is uh, 48 Hours Mystery. It comes on CBS. And it, it's all these murder cases. But basically, somebody commits a crime and then they go and they show you everything they've ever done on social media ever, ever and they use it against them in a court of law. And I'm not saying you should be doing things you shouldn't be doing, but I'm just saying this stuff is being collected on you. Right, that's well, and exactly I just want to say these facilities you. aren't very green either for all you greenies out there. They use a lot of water, a lot of <laughs> yes. electricity, um, a lot of resources to store all this data. Right, that's and why Utah is trying to shut off their water. And that's a very interesting data. approach to shut down uh, the data collection center is to talk about how we cannot afford to provide this amount of water in a very dry state right. like Utah. And it's not just siphoning off to the NSA, but now it's being siphoned off to the Stingray surveillance system and all these other surveillance uh, streetlights and mm -hmm. you know, this Intella streetlights and things like that that are scooping up all of your data and then sending it to third parties, who knows what, and all this smart homes and... The government has such an insatiable appetite to know everything about us that it needs more broadband so it can spy on us with exactly. the Internet of Things, as, as Joe Biggs talked about. There's, you know, the number of devices that you're going to have in your home, all of them capable of spying on you, all of them feeding into your Internet that you're paying for. Mm -hmm. And if you're paying for it. Why uh, do you need a smart dishwasher or a smart <laughs> refrigerator that tells you when you're out of milk, you can tell when you're out of milk? Well, you don't, right. but the CIA wants you to have one for their own purposes. The next thing again, <laughs> the privacy, the head fake about limiting corporations from sharing your data. At the same time, they're talking over and over about the cyber intelligence sharing protection program. You know what? They're only going to protect the corporations. They're going to grant them legal immunity when they share your data with mm -hmm. the government. Essentially making the case that if you're doing business with a corporation, then they own all the information that they collect about you, whether you know they're collecting that information about you or not. You have agreed to do business with uh, the, your telephone company or with your ISP or with whoever you've connected to on the internet. So any information that they collect about you is equally theirs as much as it is about you. Now, we don't believe that's true. Right, well, because when all of this uh, NSA surveillance first came out, a lot of people were, like the Yahoo and Google, and their first instinct was to say, well, we, we, we didn't know, we didn't do it, you know, protect us from these pending lawsuits that are gonna come. People say you're, you're violating our rights. So now they're protecting those people, and obviously it's gonna come out when healthcare.gov really, you know, really takes off. People who are using healthcare.gov their private data, their health information, which is historically extremely private data, mm -hmm. is now being shared with third parties. Mm -hmm. And then those third parties can share them with other parties and who knows how wide the net is cast. Um, but this is confirmed now and they're basically using it to track people, building these online profiles, which are of course vital for advertisers. And you know, the interview that I had earlier tonight just talked about how advertising is all of this mind control. And so the more data they can have on us, the easier it's going to be for them to control us. It's not just about, oh well, you know, I like this, so I'm I'm glad that I'm being targeted with this advertising because it's a relevant ad. It's about controlling you, controlling your ideas. Yes. Yes, it's not, they're not just passively lurking there like some kind of a creepy voyeur watching everything that's going on in your life. They're taking this data, they're mining this data, they're looking at how they can manipulate you after they characterize what you're about and determine that you're a person of interest. I mean, if you're somebody that just checks out and all you do is watch sports and listen to music, they're not interested in you. If you're engaged in politics, they're gonna figure out where you are in the political spectrum. They're going to target you with information. And you have to understand, this is very much like they've always done with um, gerrymandering. In terms of going in, they would, they would pick the voters to make sure they got the results that they want. We saw this in North Carolina when after decades of Democrat control, they went of the, uh, of the local state government, the local uh, state house and senate, 
they went from re Democrat control to Republican control. There was a sea change there where everybody, uh, Republicans swept everything except Congress. Congress didn't change in that one election because they had gerrymandering in place so precise that they had those, those uh, incumbents maintain that 2010 election. But 2010 was a year that they had the census and the state legislature got to redraw those boundaries. And then you saw everything change because they picked the voters. Now what they're doing with social media is they're going to determine, and they've already done it, they're gonna determine who you are and where you are on the political spectrum. And then they're going to use that to push their information to you to control you. That's exactly. how they're going to pick the voters and manipulate the voters. It isn't gonna be something as old fashioned as gerrymandering. They're going to go directly to you through social media. Let's talk now about these new felonies that are coming out. And I mentioned yesterday on the nightly news, this article from Wired Magazine, written by one of their contributing editors, talking about how he had been a consultant on the new movie, Black Hat from Michael Mann, and he talked about how in awe he was of Michael Mann and Miami Vice, and of course we know that Miami Vice was used to sell a very uh, different image of the war on drugs that exists in reality, basically glorifying mm -hmm. civil asset forfeiture, making it a game, showing uh, that only the really bad guys lost their cigar boats and their Ferraris and uh, Tubbs and Crockett got to drive around in these things, never showing how it was really being applied to take uh, all the cash that they might come across from s some uh, poor landscaper who was doing business in cash, steal all of his money, steal his car, look and see that there's one person in a car as they're doing today, one person in a car that's got a, a joint that's visible and they confiscate the entire car from the other guy, even though that guy's not driving, it's not his car, they take the entire car. So they've already used Michael Mann to sell the, the war on drugs. Now they're using Michael Mann essentially to sell the cyber war. And that's what this uh, fellow said. He says, yeah, this is really great. And then I got kind of scared on Tuesday evening when I saw the details of Obama's cyber proposals. And this is what he said. He was very concerned about the fact that they're stepping up this computer fraud and abuse act. This CFAA is what they came after Aaron Schwartz with. And they were going to try to send him to jail for 35 years. And presumably, according to the official story, he committed suicide because he was so distraught over that. I don't believe that for a moment. Yeah, so many that people. wasn't his that personality. No. Yeah. Yes, and there was a tweet out from the prosecutor's husband that said that, wait a minute, when everybody pushed back against her and said, you drove him to suicide, uh, trying to get this draconian legislation pushed, on, trumping up these charges to a 35 year thing. He said, wait a minute, she offered him three and a half month uh, plea bargain deal and he turned it down. That's the public Aaron Schwartz that we had seen, the fighter. Right. So I don't believe that he committed suicide. Nevertheless, they're going to up this. They're going to now um, specifically first time offenses that don't involve credit cards or more than $5,000 in information. Those crimes will now be felonies instead of misdemeanors. They say also CFAA violations would qualify, and this is very important, for prosecution under the RICO statute, meaning for example, if a member of Anonymous is busted in a petty denial of service attack, she might now be held legally accountable for every cyber crime they say Anonymous has committed. Wow. So when they start making these things into felonies, when they start saying if there's any kind of tangential connection between you and somebody else that we can make, we're going to throw everything. We're gonna attribute all of that to you with the RICO statute. Mm -hmm. It's also the prison industrial complex, because you put everybody in, in these prisons for these petty offenses. You got people go to prison for check fraud, you know, yes. little nickel and dime offenses. Yes. And it's obviously a way to scare off hackers from hackers that are the white hat hackers that are on the good team from, you know, it's just like the way they wanna shut down any of the whistleblowers, it's a way to say, Absolutely. We're the only ones that can, you know, hack into Yes, the we're we're about out of time. We're not going to go through the details of this, but this is what the computer community is saying. Warning to white hat hackers, Obama's proposal is a threat to what you do. They're saying they cannot even do their work if they expose the vulnerability in a Microsoft Windows program, for example, mm -hmm. and say, "Hey, here's a vulnerability, you need to fix it." Under these proposals, they could be charged with a felony. So it's going to shut down white hat hackers as well. And I think that's interesting because the only details that we know about the Trans-Pacific Partnership that's being negotiated are the ones that have been released from WikiLeaks. And of right. course, they would make that a felony. 
they would come after those people with a uh, RICO statute. And there were some interesting articles about how this is uh, breaking down. Politico pointed out that uh, there's some very disparate uh, bedfellows here, people who are on the far left and people who they would characterize as being on the far right. Of course, we understand that they just care about civil liberties in this area. That'd be people like Walter Jones and Duncan Hunter, they say are aligning with liberals and the Democrat Party to try to oppose Obama and the GOP who are trying to ram through this trade agreement. And he said already back in November that that was a very high priority for him. So that's what we have to look forward to. That's what they're negotiating with these corporations and private. I think I'm, I'm very concerned about how this is going to be a pervasive consolidation as we saw with NAFTA. One of the things they said was in NAFTA, the people in the Democrat Party are very concerned about that because they don't like the way that that turned out. They say, well, uh, don't worry, it's not going to be a repeat of that. It is absolutely yeah. going to be a repeat of that. It's going to be the next step, the consolidation. As we pointed out before, you have these regional trade authorities that they set up like the European Union and NAFTA, and now they're consolidating them into a larger step. It's the next step as part of a global corporate governance. And that's what right. we're all very concerned about. Yeah, well, the giant sucking sound that took all of our jobs out with NAFTA. I mean, there aren't any yes. other jobs to yes. ship off. Yes, absolutely. And of course, it's another way that they're going to attack internet freedom. Well, that's it for our broadcast tonight. Uh, thanks for joining us for this live coverage of Obama's State of the Union address. Stay tuned, we're going to cover what they try to do to us in terms of taking over the internet. If you're not a subscriber to Prison Planet TV, please consider becoming a subscriber and uh, supporting our operation here. If you're not a subscriber to our YouTube channel, that's free. But of course, if you become a subscriber to Prison Planet TV, you can get that right now for $29.95 and you can share that with up to 20 people. That brings you the nightly news every night, Monday through Friday. And it also gives you and all of your friends access to Alex Jones's documentaries. And of course, that's the best way to wake people up to give them the broad perspective. And then keep in touch with what's going on on a daily basis with the nightly news. Thanks for joining us. Join us tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.